Hey everyone, so welcome to part one on our React tutorial here. Uh, in part one here, I'm going to step through the basics on how to set it up. Uh, we'll write some basic components, I'll go through the layout, and I'll just talk about syntax and just very basic stuff. I hope you subscribe and follow along to these series because I'm going to step through it in a, a specific way. Uh, I want to approach these projects and tutorials right here as if you're starting up a new programming language and you're trying to learn what is the most important thing to do for a project right now to get it up and running. And so what that deals with is the setup, the syntax, and then we're going to jump into routing. Uh, we'll go through components, forms, we'll jump through database, how to set up a regular website where you want it to run. And so that is the process here. I hope you subscribe. So right here I have a project folder. And inside of this project folder, I have a folder called React 2023 Part 1. And so I'm using Visual Studio Code. And what I like to do is I click on this folder and I drop it into Visual Studio Code. And it will open up this project for me. Or it will open up the folder. And it also has Terminal in here, which I like. Uh, if your Terminal doesn't come on, you can hold Control tilde. You know, you can turn it on and off like that and the terminal goes right into this project folder so that we can just start typing our commands. All right, so let's install React and how we do that is we type up npx create-react-app space and then I'm going to put a period and I do that because I'm already inside of my folder that I want to install it into. Uh, if you want to install it into your own folder, put the folder name right, like that and it'll install into that folder. So I'm going to install it into the current. And there we go, it finished. And you'll see right here, it says to start up the server, you just type npm start. So let's start it up and see how it looks like right now. npm start. Uh, you always want to run a test at first right here to make sure that your local server is running. And right here, I'm gonna drag this down here so you can see. So there it is, localhost. Uh, colon 3000 that is uh, react running right here and I'll show you where this is running so after we run our command there you notice that it created this boilerplate right here these are all the basic folders source files everything that takes to run react let's take a look at package.json right here you're gonna see the dependencies of what it installed you know you need all of this right here is using react here's the version react dom and all these other stuff uh, this is very important in here to notice because uh, this dependency right here, let's say over here, you see this folder called node modules. That's where all of these are installed into. So if I delete this folder, I can always have all of this reinstalled again. Let's exit out of here. I can always have that reinstalled by doing npm install. So anytime you download a project, just do npm install on it. It's going to install all of the uh, dependencies, the libraries that it needs to run the project. And then you notice down here, this is very important too, scripts. This is what's running uh, React. So you notice that when we typed up npm start, that's what it's doing, npm and then the script name. And that's what it's running right here. After you type up npm start, it's actually running this script right here. And that's what's starting it up. If I type up npm build, it's going to run this. So that's how it works. We can create our own in here too. But you know, uh, maybe we'll do that at the end. We're gonna close that up. And we're going to step through these folders right here. Let's start with public. So inside of public, what do we notice? It looks like HTML stuff, right? Favicon, HTML, this index HTML stuff. And I want you to notice this right here. Let's scroll down into index.html. See, it has all of the HTML features, right? It has the head, title, has body. What do you really notice inside the body right here? It has this div with an ID root, okay? Div with ID root. So pay attention to this div right here with the ID root because everything we run is actually going to put all the code right into this, the middle part of this uh, div. And that's what's showing on our server right here. So ID root, and uh, let's go down to source here. And let's go to index, right? Because public was index HTML. Then we have source with index.js. Here is the JavaScript file for it. And what is this doing? It's importing React, it's importing CSS. It imports this app right here. And then we go down here and it's saying, initialize this variable called root with the document get element by ID root. 
Where did that come from? Well, it came from that index.html, right? The ID root. That's what it's grabbing right now. It's grabbing that ID root for this variable, and then it's rendering it onto the screen for us in here. And it's pushing this uh, app right here. It's rendering that. Well, where is this app coming from? Well, it's importing it. This is a component that it's importing. So let's go to app. Here it is, app with its own CSS, and it's the app has a function and it's returning HTML. What HTML is it returning? This right here. You see that? It's just HTML code in here with uh, JSX and all this lingo here. And then it's it, it's exporting the app. So this function app is being exported as a component, which goes right back into here. This is importing that component and populating it right in here. So this is how we call the component. And then it just puts all of that HTML from the app right into here, which goes into the ID root. And that's what's displaying on our home page right there. So let's go back to app.js. Um, I'll start up the server again right here, npm start. And then I'm going to delete all of this right here. Let's see here. We're going to delete, you know, we're going to remove all of this because I want to show you something. With React here, you always need to encapsulate everything inside of a block. This is called a uh, fragmented segment, I believe. React uses this so that you can just put everything into its own block. And then we do our own HTML here. And I can say this is the home page. If I save this, watch, it's going to refresh right here. Home page, you see that? So that's where it's coming from. Now, remember what I said, you have to encapsulate everything into a block. If I put another P tag right here, this is the home page slash P. Now look at what happens if I remove this block right here. I'm gonna get an error because it has to be encapsulated inside of a block. You can put a div if you want like that. See, it has to be inside of a block, right? So just think of that every, every time you're writing something where you're returning it, you have to put it inside its own block. And that's why React has this fragment right here, this fragment set, I believe it's called. And so uh, you can use that. You can use anything. You can put span. You can put just whatever as long as it's inside of its own fragment set. But React gives you this right here to work with to make it easy. All right, so we have the home page set up, and this is called a component. All right, so let's write a component. What is a component here? There's a there's a couple of ways to do it, and uh, I'm going to create a variable right here. I'll do a const header equals, and this is where we can just put JSX code. Uh, I have a navigation JSX code that I wrote right here. It's just a very simple nav. See, it has a nav. It's you using a unordered list with a home link and a contact us link. And we're going to get into this link syntax in a minute. You know what? Right now, we're just going to do a href equals. That's just all. That's just what this link is. But I'm going to step into the link a little bit later so you don't get confused. href contact. So that's how the link looks like. So this is a regular navigation. And look, I'm just putting it into this right here, right? All right. So now that I have this header right here and you saw that we don't have to put quotes in here to make it a string. We're using JSX here. We can just put regular HTML tag. So how do I include it in here? I want to put the header right on top, right up here, right? I'm going to do bracket header. Save that. And there you go. Look at that. It puts it right up there. Logo, two links. I need to format this a little bit. Let me put in the CSS for this so that it looks a little bit better. So uh, there is an app CSS here. I'm going to go into that. And then let's scroll down here. I'm going to put the CSS down here. I already created it so that, you know, we're not wasting time. It's just a nav bar CSS so that I could just make it look a little bit better. And look at that. Our CSS works in here inside app.css. So let's go back here. And so what did we learn from this? We created a variable. I show you how to include that variable into the page here and it shows it. Well, this is not the best way to do it. We want to create this as a component. So let's go out here and let's say if I create a function header as a component, and I'm going to put this into here. Let's cut that out. I'm going to delete this. 
and then in here we have to say return right okay so since I have this inside of a block called nav I don't need to do that fragment set right so that works it's all encapsulated inside this nav here and then notice that I call the uh, function with a uppercase header right because every component we want to really um, have it capitalized for the first letter and then in here this is the way to call a variable but to call a component we do this bracket uppercase header like that and save and then look at that it acts the same way do you see that this is now including a component for us so you see there there were multiple ways there's this is how to call a variable and this is how you call a component and you see how we did this right here and you might be wondering now how come I'm not putting semicolons you don't have to with the syntax in here you can do it this way if you want look at that if I save it there's no issues that's just like the old way of doing it but you know a lot of people just do it this way now you can just save on typing and then also if you don't want to type up function header like that you can also do a const header equals arrow function just like that so that works too you know I like writing arrow functions more but it's all up to you you can write the old way or you can do these arrow functions and you know the same thing with this function app right here if you want to write short code you don't have to say this you can type export default function app and so that also works we're gonna save that and you see everything is running fine still so you know I hope you don't get confused when you see uh, different ways that people are typing up the code you can do this way which is what the boilerplate is exporting for us this is how it's showing so I think if you write it this way where you're exporting it you know which one is get getting exported right here because you notice that we also had another function up here and we're not exporting that we're using that as a component in here so it's whatever you're exporting as the app here which is gets included into this index right here all right so it's whatever you're exporting then you can import it so I hope you notice that we're not doing this the right way still right it's not clean this is not clean code we have this component here that we should be importing so how do we do that inside source folder here we're gonna create a new folder called components and then we're gonna create a file called header with uppercase header.js inside header.js we are going to have this right here let's cut this out paste it in and so we want to export this right so export default function header let's save that we're gonna go back into here and we're going to import dot slash components slash header you see that it shows up we import it we save it and we have an error let's see what it says header is not defined that's because we're not importing it as header from that right there save it and there you go import header from components header and you see how clean this code is now we can create a lot of different components we can create a footer down here you know we can do that as long as we create it we import it we can put a header we're going to put our footer and we have everything in the body so that is how you create components and how to make it clean by putting it inside its own components folder all right so let's create one more component so you can see how it works here and uh, let's create a file in here called contact right because we want a contact file or a, a contact page actually you don't have to put everything inside of components if you don't want to let's say we create a new folder here we call page or actually let's call it like pages right because it's going to be multiple pages that we'll have in here and let's put this contact um, JS in here so we're gonna create it inside here and like I said we could just call this like contact that's a function that we export default contact return and let's put our fragment set right here and we're just gonna call this a contact us page so we know h1 contact us so we know that's the contact us page so how do we call this contact page here we created a new page do I just say contact is that how it's gonna just call it nope that doesn't work this is just a component that we wrote 
uh, we can import the component right here. Let's say we import contact from, say this is pages, contact, and then we just say contact like that. And see, there's the contact us page, but we're importing this component to get that. But how do we route to this page? So in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about routing, how we're going to set that up, and we'll go further into it. Like I said, I want to break these up so that you can understand it piece by piece. And we're just going to move along with it. So make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one where we're going to do routing, and we're going to get really deep into this. So uh, stay tuned. Code Kai out.